Making your footage look more cinematic is something that can help your videos to look more professional and help them stand out from the rest. In today's video, I want to go over a couple of pretty basic techniques and tips to help you guys take a clip from looking something like this to something more like this. With these tips and techniques. What is up guys? How are you all doing? The first thing that I want to talk about is a couple of things that you guys are going to need to do before we actually jump into Premiere. The first thing that's really going to help sell this cinematic look is to shoot in a shallow depth of field by using a lower f-stop on your camera. The very simple version is if you have a low f-stop and it opens up that aperture a little wider, that's gonna make your depth of field shallower so you can get those blurry backgrounds and that nice bokeh. You guys don't wanna overdo it and do it on every clip. Something that is nice is to get a mix of both shallow depth of field and a deeper depth of field. The next thing that really helps is to try and capture some smooth movement. Even if you guys are doing that handheld or if you have a gimbal, that's gonna be a lot easier. But introducing some nice smooth movement into your shots can often make them look way more cinematic. If you guys are gonna be shooting handheld, it's often pretty tricky to get some nice smooth movement. But we're gonna go over a few things once we get into Premiere that can help us with those later on. But it is important to note that you wanna do as best as you can to capture all of the movement and all of these effects in camera first and then we're going to be focusing on what we can do in Premiere to change them and further enhance them a little bit later. Finding good lighting is going to be one of the major things that affect how cinematic your footage actually turns out looking. So ideally you guys want to be heading out when you have nice soft light, maybe it's golden hour or if you're shooting somewhere in the shade, but you definitely don't want to be shooting in really harsh lighting conditions where you have some blown out highlights and some dark shadows and it's going to be way too contrasty and it's not going to look very cinematic at all. Unless it's something obvious like the sun where the sun might be blown on in the background, that's fine. But for the most part, we really want to protect those highlights. Something that we can do to help us protect those highlights is just slightly underexpose your image if you ever have a scenario where you might have uneven lighting. That's going to allow us to bring up our shadows slightly in post without losing all the details and data in those highlights. Something else that also really helps with this is shooting in a flatter picture profile. And so many of you guys ask what picture profile I use. And honestly, I change it depending on the scenario that I'm shooting. But 90% of the time I'm shooting in Cine 4 because it's quite nice and flat, but it's not too flat. And if I'm in a bit of a challenging scenario where I have some uneven lighting, maybe it's direct sunlight in the middle of the day or something like that, I will switch my camera over into some form of log footage so that it's a lot flatter and I don't lose all of that data. I don't like to shoot in log all of the time because in my opinion it's just a little bit tricky to deal with. You can only shoot in your native ISO and there's often a lot of grain in your shadows and it's just not really worth the trade-off in my opinion. So Cine 4 is my go-to picture profile unless I'm in a bit of a tricky lighting scenario. The last thing I like to do when capturing my footage is make sure that I'm filming in a higher frame rate so I can slow my footage down later on. I'm definitely guilty of probably overusing slow motion in a lot of my cinematic B-roll style videos, but personally, I love the way it looks and it helps in so many ways, especially when shooting things in handheld. Definitely shoot in a higher frame rate if you can. We're gonna jump over into Premiere now and I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of little tips we can do to the footage once we've captured it. So let's head into Premiere. The clip that I've chosen to demonstrate this on is this one right here. It's basically just like a follow shot of Hannah's hand going through these things. I think it's really cool and it's a nice base to start adding all of these techniques because it already looks a little bit cinematic. I filmed this on my Sony a7 III with a Tamron lens at 28 millimeters and f2.8. So it has a nice shallow depth of field. The background's quite blurred out. I was handheld, so it has a little bit of shake, which is something we're gonna deal with in a little while. But before we get to that, I filmed this clip in 100 FPS so I can slow it down all the way and that's the first thing that we're gonna do. Let's just have a look and let me show you guys what this clip actually looks like straight out of camera. 
pretty cool it's a nice shot this shot is actually taken from a video we did a little while ago of demonstrating how i actually filmed this whole cinematic b-roll section of hannah out in this forest if you guys do want to see that video it's going to be linked up over here but otherwise let's get into actually making this clip look even more cinematic than it already does first thing we're going to do straight off the bat is slow it down all the way to 25% so that it becomes buttery smooth. We're gonna go to speed duration and put it at 25%. Slowing it down straight away is gonna take away a bunch of that micro jitter. You can see now looking way more cinematic already. Look how epic this looks with slow motion. Once we've got that slow motion on, I'm gonna cut a little bit off of either end. Let's start our clip right here and we're gonna end it about there. I wanna do one more thing to make this even more stable, and that is add warp stabilizer. Now, because we've slowed this down, it's not gonna let us add warp stabilizer right onto it. We need to quickly nest it just by doing that. And then we can search for warp and drop our warp stabilizer on here. After a little while, it has done the trick and warp stabilized this clip. A couple of things you need to look out for are sometimes when you apply warp stabilizer to a clip, it ends up looking really weird and like wobbles in frame and everything. So just be aware, look at it. You can't always use this. It doesn't always work. For this clip in particular, it actually did a really great job. So check out this side by side and you can see the difference between the before and after of using warp stabilizer. No one would suspect that this was shot handheld on a lens that doesn't even have image stabilization. So great little trick, slow motion and warp stabilizer work so well together. The next thing that we're gonna start looking at is adding a little bit of movement into this shot. Now, this shot already has loads of movement when we actually captured it and when we filmed it. So this one doesn't need it as much as a lot of other shots could. Maybe for example, you have a tripod shot where there was no movement in it at all. You could use the same effect to make it a little bit more interesting, but even when it's not a locked off tripod shot, I often find myself doing this just to add another aspect of movement to that moving shot. It really does have a cool effect and sometimes works out so nicely. We're gonna head over to this little stopwatch where it says scale and we're gonna animate some keyframes. If you haven't done this before, don't be scared of it. It's actually a lot more simple than you think. Basically what we're gonna do is put this first keyframe over here. It's gonna be at 100 and further down, we're gonna zoom in the shot a little bit so that it starts at the full wideness of the shot we captured in camera. And as the clip plays out, the video is gonna slowly punch in more, even more so than us actually moving forward when we filmed it. You can see here between these keyframes, it starts at 100%, that's normal. And by the end of the clip, it's gonna be at 113, which is a little bit more zoomed in. You don't wanna go overboard with this. You cropping in on your image and you're gonna lose quality. You can do it a little bit more if you shot something in 4K and your project is only gonna be at 1080. For this one in particular, I wouldn't recommend going any more than 15 if you wanna keep that quality. I'm just gonna spread these keyframes out to the beginning and end of the clip. And you can see now that it has a nice smooth punch in, super subtle, you might not even notice in this clip, but it does make a little bit of a difference and it turns out really nice. The next thing that we're gonna start looking at is our colors and how we can get those cinematic colors. This is a huge part of actually making your video look cinematic. I am about to come out with a deep dive color grading video. If you're watching this video a little bit later on and that video is already out, it will be linked up here. If not, that one's gonna be coming out really soon where we go in depth into color grading and really deep dive it and show you guys everything you need to know about color grading. For this, we're gonna do a very basic quick overview of how we can make this look a little bit more cinematic using color grading. Let's create an adjustment layer because personally, I don't like to color grade each individual clip. I like to just create one adjustment layer and I can drag it out over those clips. So we can grab that and we can throw it on here, grab it out. If we had more clips over here, we could drag this out for the duration of them. For this, we don't need to. Now we can jump over into the color tab and start color correcting and grading this footage. The two main tools that I'm gonna be using is this waveform over here to make sure that we're getting our exposure and contrast correct. And then I'm gonna be using this vector scope to make sure that our colors are how we want them. This is gonna be simple, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but for the most part, we wanna look at this 
and try and just get our blacks nice and low just as they start to hit zero there you can see over there and then we are going to lift our shadows a little bit lift these highlights and whites that's looking really nice for this in particular i want this to look really nice and warm and as you guys can see in this image and even more so in this waveform that this image is looking a little bit too blue especially in our highlights so I'm just going to change this and make this a lot warmer of an image by adjusting this temperature slider here. You can do this to compensate if your camera's white balance wasn't perfect or the way that you want it. I'm going to make this a lot warmer, bring it about there. You don't want to overdo it, but I think that's looking pretty cool. I also think we could bring up our contrast a little bit more and make sure that our blacks aren't clipping too much just all about those fine little tweaks. We don't want to do anything too crazy and drastic in here. You want to keep it natural looking and something you definitely want to focus on is the skin tones right here and make sure those look realistic and natural. You don't want your person to look all pink or magenta, something like this, or you don't want them to look too yellow or too blue. It needs to look just right. The next thing that we can do is apply a lot. This is something that you don't have to do, but it's a great way to easily give your footage that stylistic look. I have lots up for sale if you guys want to get the exact look that I'm using. They're a really easy way to just click and apply like a really nice cinematic look to your footage. You don't have to do too much to the rest of it or do anything crazy, but you don't have to use them. It's just a nice, easy, quick way to get your footage looking really nice. I'm going to apply a mylat quickly. And you can see that that's too strong for most of the time you're gonna to have to turn your LUT way down with all LUTs that you guys would get. You wanna see kind of where you want it. About there is looking quite cool. It's very rare that I would go above 50 when using my LUTs. And something else I've noticed is I wanna head back to this basic tab and just lift my shadows a little bit more and even add a little bit more warmth. You can see that this is starting to make a huge difference already. And if I was to turn this on and off, you can see the before and after. This after is looking so much better and we haven't done anything crazy. We've just corrected it and added that a lot. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of a sun flare like overlay. This is something that you can use in certain clips, but it's definitely something you don't want to overuse. But if you do it very subtly, it's a nice way to bring some more life to your clips. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. I have a orange flare here, which essentially is just a light leak like overlay. You can see these really cool lens flares and everything. We can drop this above our footage and add a cool little look. The first thing we need to do is change the blend mode to screen. Something you guys really want to focus on is that if you have a light leak or if there's sun coming in in that overlay, you want to match it to where the sun is in your actual footage. If the sun's shining from this side in your footage and your overlay is coming in from this side, it's going to look bad. It's not going to look good. So just make sure they match. If they are coming from the wrong side, you can just look for a horizontal flip in this effects panel here. Drop it on there, it's gonna flip that over and all of a sudden the sides are gonna be coming from the other side. I know that this is way too strong and that I wanna turn it down. We can do that by heading over here to the opacity and just dropping this way down to something like 50%. And if you have a look now, that adds a very subtle but very cool effect of that light coming in, just making this image look a little bit more warm and sunny than it, it even was originally. The last thing you guys can do to your footage here to make it look a little bit more cinematic is adding those cinematic bars that a lot of people like to use. This is kind of a matter of preference whether you want or don't want them. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. The first way being you can just download some sort of PNG image of like cine bars for whatever aspect ratio you want, which is what I have here. And it's just gonna just add those black bars on the top and bottom of your footage you can see here. So a lot of people like this, a lot of people don't. It's kind of just down to preference. This is one way that you can do it and it's adding those bars over the top of your video so your actual video's aspect ratio isn't changing and you're still gonna have that 16 by nine aspect ratio. If you wanna do this the proper way, you actually can take those bars away and I advise that this is the better way to do it and what you actually wanna do is head over into your sequence and go to sequence settings 
and just change this so it's going to change the actual aspect ratio. We want to change this from 1080 to 817. That's going to give us a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. We can apply that and now you can see that our actual video has gone that wider aspect ratio. Something else really cool about this is that now we have a little bit of extra room on that footage because our original footage was shot in 16 by 9. So we can actually move this clip around up or down and frame it up the exact way that we want. If we wanted, we could add more keyframes into here as well. So I'm gonna do that because this starts off quite low and I don't wanna cut the hand off, but I want it to rise up as Hannah's moving down. So we're just gonna click on this stopwatch to make some more keyframes. And then we're gonna move this down. And as it gets further, we want our frame to come up. We can end it about there. I think it's gonna look really cool. And then we're gonna move these keyframes to the beginning and to the end. So right in the beginning of the clip, we have it starting really low at 280. And you can see as it plays through, it's lifting up and zooming in at the same time. And it's making it look even more cinematic than it originally was. So that turned out really nicely. I'm really happy with how this clip actually looks. And if you guys look at this before and after, this is completely different and the only things we did were some basic techniques in Premiere. Just make sure you guys do what you can to capture the clip as cinematically as possible when you're out shooting it. It's just going to give you a better base to work with and you're going to be able to get a better end result. Something else to note is that it's very important when you guys are exporting your video or rendering out your project that you render it out in 24 frames per second always. Even if you filmed it in 30 frames per second or some other frame rate, make sure that you are rendering out at 24 FPS only. Let's look at a bunch of these other clips and see the before and afters using these same techniques and effects applied to them. And you guys can see what a difference it makes to these other clips we have here. Something great about this is you can even mess around with this and apply all of these things to some old footage you might have. Maybe you can't get out right now and shoot some new crispy B-roll, but you can experiment with this on a bunch of other stuff that you have and give it a new look and bring it to life all over again. It's so much fun and you can do slight tweaks and adjustments for each clip. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you wanna check out the LUTs, they will be linked down below. That's gonna be it for this one, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Peace.